Welcome back to Kenya on your very own live safari. We're now with some Coke's Heart Beast. I know some people were wanting to see them. We haven't had a good view of them yet. So a relative of the Terpy, another fast runner capable of speeds of about up to 80 kilometers an hour. Now, Dave, for the birders, where did they go? Oh no, they have disappeared. Yeah, I'm just going to look carefully into this. Now, on these sort of short grass plains, you get quite a few different species of birds. And we've only seen them once or twice in the Sabi Sands, but I've seen them quite often here. But now, of course, as soon as I want to show them, they've run away. Uh, there were some Temex courses that were on the ground. But we've got some Thompson's gazelles to, to, to look at in the meantime while I try relocate the scurrying little Temex courser. Well, there's about seven of them, and they have absolutely vanished. Hmm. Naughty birdies. We'll have to find them again. Remember, hashtag Safari Live uh, if you want to ask us any questions. So there we go. It's fast becoming one of my favorite antelopes, the Thompson's gazelle. They are very, very cute, and um, they have the most adorable little alarm call. Key. Key. There we go. You can see how pregnant a lot of the females are. Um, they should be dropping any moment. I've seen one or two babies, but there should be quite a few baby Tommies around shortly. So unless, no luck on the leopards when we've left the Mara River. Oh, well. And we're now heading out back onto the plain. We're gonna head towards an area where we've got a good chance at, at lions and, and elephants and all that and all that around an area called Mitya Mazua. And you think, well that's a strange name. And especially if I give you the translation. Mitya Mazua means the milk tree. Dave, do you know what a milk tree is? No. Oh dear. Well it is a euphorbia. So uh, you will uh, those of you will who have been to South Africa and whatnot will know them as a, a euphorbia or candelabra tree and um, basically they have a very potent multi, milky latex so the road is not a particularly big uh, euphorbia so mitia maziwa, miti is tree, maziwa is milk oh they are so cute of course, uh, not the fastest animal, but we've seen them escape a cheetah quite a few times now. And it is their ability to make almost 90 degree turns uh, that keeps them, well, out of the predator's bellies more often than not. So they're, they're not by any means a slowpoke, but not nearly as fast as a topi or, or, or a coke's heart beast. But they are able to make the most incredibly sharp turns to escape predation. Hunter would like to know, are the Thompson's gazelles like impala? There are so many of them around. Well, we've got lots of impala here as well, um, but they're not like impala. Uh, they are exclusively grazers, so that you will only find them on the grasslands, whereas impala are jewel feeders that can browse or graze. But they are probably the most numerous antelope in the, in the Mara. Of course, till the Great Migration arrives, and wildebeest are by far the most numerous antelope. But yes, no, they, they are very numerous. And I, the leopards and, and, and cheetahs prefer them as prey, because they are quite a bit smaller than impala. Probably about half the size of an impala, but um, bigger than a steenbok, I won't say. But yes, they're very, very pretty. I love their little noses. They're so funny looking. Now, I'm just going to bumble up the road a little bit towards some Defasa waterbuck. Now, of course, that is a slightly different waterbuck species to the one we get in the Sabi Sands. And they lack the circular ring around their bottom, and uh, they have just a plain white bottom that serves the same purpose. So, bear with me. I'll wave. Can you see me waving? Hi. Jack's mom, and um, well, hopefully Jack is watching too. And uh, Jack's mom would like to know why don't we see Thompson's gazelle in the Sabi sand? Oh, there's a slightly better view of those hartebeest, Dave. 
I'm still looking out for the courses along the short grass, but no luck just yet. Um, but uh, we don't get Thompson's Gazelle on the Sabi Sands because what is going on? Dave, I've got audio coming out of your pocket. Well, that's weird. Sorry. Well <laughs> Dave, what was going on there? So Dave's, Dave's, Dave suddenly had another uh, segment or show going on in his pocket. I heard myself talking. It was quite funny. Okay, well, moving on. There we go. Coke's Heart Beast and the, and, and the Shepherd's Tree in the distance. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Uh, there we go. And there's a little Tommy, male Tommy behind. But um, Jack Swan was asking, why don't we get Thompson's gazelle in the Sabi Sands? Well, uh, it's not ideal habitat for them. There's not enough good grass. So they like these short grass plants. Um, being short themselves, they need short grass so they can see their predators. Of course, I'm only joking. But they do prefer short grass to feed on. So uh, the rainfall's probably not high enough. The closest thing to a Thompson's gazelle we get in Southern Africa is actually an arid species. Oh, banded mongoose, dead ahead. See him, standing up and looking at us. There's a whole whole mob of them coming in. Hi, guys. Sorry, Jack's mom. I got sidetracked. Let me get a bit closer to the banded mongoose. I love them so much. I had them as pets as a child. Um, but so the, the rainfall's not good enough and and there wouldn't be enough food for them, basically. And also with that thick, long, uh, long grass and thick bush, uh, they would be eaten very quickly and very sharply by all the smart leopards and lions there. Oh, here we go, here we go. Look at this, isn't this exciting? I love these guys so much. Hi, guys. They make the most incredible noises when they find something to eat. There's... And you can see why they are called a banded mongoose. They are full of bands. Oh, I just got to jump out of my turret. There we go. Hi, guys. Now, they live in very, very close-knit social groups. Um, as you can see there, we can hear them sneezing almost. <laughs> too much dust in the schnoz. And they will defend their, their territory Oh, look at the one, you see the one digging? Oh, yeah. oh you got him. Well done, Dave. Oh, oh, what you got, what you got? So he's probably looking for dung beetle larvae there. Now, there are no scorpions in the Mara. It is too wet for them. So you'll probably find dung beetles, dung beetle larvae, um, millipedes, grasshoppers, birds' eggs, and, and a whole host of other insects that they will they will they'll feed on, and um, also other small rodents. Oh, see, look, they've got something there. Now you might even see a bit of a fight if they get up a nice big, juicy dung beetle grub. Now they'll be quite close to their den at this time of the day already, and they slowly feed back towards home. Nothing too big, maybe a small dung beetle larvae. Now, there might be, oh, it could be a whole host of things. It's quite difficult. It's a little bit far for us to see exactly. There's definitely something in that pile of dung. Now, the Lion King, <laughs> the movie, got a few things wrong. So uh, I'm pretty sure when the Disney people came here, they saw the banded mongooses and they stand up like meerkats. And, and uh, in this area, uh, and in Kenya, they're quite famous for feeding off parasites that are on warthogs. So that's where I think Timon got misidentified. Timon wasn't a meerkat. He was actually supposed to be a banded mongoose. But speaking about uh, something that banded mongooses are friends, He's got Pumba.